So tonight we're going to talk about a subject that uh, is, believe it or not, I hear that it's controversial um, in some cases because the religious world is trying to find something else to latch on to, to make people feel comfortable. But God wants us to be righteous. Righteous isn't always comfortable. Amen. Uh, God's not changing to fit us, but we're fitting to change into what he called us to be. So tonight we're going to be talking in class number two about the authority that's in uh, the law of the spirit of life. <laughs> the authority that's in the law of the spirit of life, and that's going to cover the law and grace. Amen. Amen. So it says in Romans 8, 2, for the law. Does anybody see law there? Mm -hmm. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Ah, so there's still a law. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me how? Free, Free from the law of sin and death. Amen. So there's one law. It's called the law of the spirit of life. And another law that I've been made free from, the law of sin and death. But they're the same law. They have just two different positions. We're going to find out what that means. At the top of your sheet, in fact, uh, I did put this up on the website so you can download these sheets. I kind of did a little uh, illustration to kind of start with because when we're talking about the constitution of God's kingdom, you've got to talk about law. Because, are you ready for this? You might want to write this in your notes. Grace cannot operate without law. Grace cannot operate without law. We're going to find out why. But as you see in the little illustration at the top, I put it in three sections. There's the old covenant. And in the middle, there's the law. And then there's the new covenant. The old covenant involved regulation, works, judgment, death, and the atonement. That was in the Old Covenant. So that was a tutor to show us how bad we were. <laughs> Talk about, you kind of want to avoid that class, but that's a class you need. It's a tutor to find out how bad we were. And the hopelessness of being able at any point to get good enough. So it was called the law of sin and death. Are we good so far? Yes. And that old covenant came as a result of the first Adam. Because he trespassed, because he, he transgressed. It brought a need for an old covenant. It brought regulation, works, judgment, death, and atonement. The need for atonement. You know, I really, one of my pet peeves is whenever I hear any minister say, let the blood of Jesus atone for your sins. Uh, folks, the blood of Jesus redeems me. It, it takes it away. Amen? And you know, uh, your Tuesday night, uh, what do we call it? A Tuesday night uh, Discipleship Tuesday goes right along with this. I mean, I think you ought to all watch that video if you haven't seen it yet. Because this really goes right along with what the apostle was talking about. In the middle, everybody say in the middle, in the middle. Is, the is the law. So the law, according to the old, it just told me how bad I was. So I was under the law. And I couldn't get good enough. So the law re represented precepts, principles, and statutes. Now... I couldn't get to the new covenant by my works. Amen. 
No matter how many calves I slayed, it didn't cover the next sin I would commit. So I was hopeless in the sense that it didn't feel like there was any way for me to get through to a new and living way. Is anybody thankful for Jesus? <laughs> of course. So he brought a new covenant. Now that new covenant is empowering. You know, we can say amen out loud in class amen. here. Amen. amen. I mean, amen. I, this is interaction. It is empowering. It is faith. It is justification. It is life. It is what? Redemption through the last Adam. Now, I know he's called the last Adam in scripture, but really he's the firstborn of many brethren. So how many of you know you're the new Adam through him? So through him, he brought a hallway. Do you see that in the little illustration? He brought in a hallway because all we could get was mercy in the old covenant. But now through the hallway of his righteousness, his righteousness brought me to grace. You know what? Uh -huh. There are times I still need his mercy. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Have we got room? You can scoot around here, hon, so he can fit somewhere in here. Yeah. And we do have another sheet for you. So now you all are going to get to see my honey. We're going to both be on. All right. So this is my lovely wife right here. Say hi, honey. <laughs> yes, this is the voice you often hear off camera. Okay. So now we're going through the hallway. Jesus provided a hallway from mercy, even though I still need that sometimes, but I don't live in mercy. Amen. I live in his grace. So through righteousness, not by works of righteousness that I did, but according to him, he saved me. Now, by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. So now we have been provided a hallway, not due to our righteousness or works to begin with, but through his righteousness, now I have been provided a way into his grace. Amen. Amen. Now, what I love about this is, is are you trying to sit off camera? Oh. <laughs> what I love about this is kings are called your grace. Yes. The reason why they're called your grace is because they have to decide if they're going to bestow grace. So one day I had this vivid vision of a king's court, the king on his throne. And they brought in what looked like a hopeless person who had been in all kinds of trouble and was filthy and was <laughs> falling before the king. And they said, what would you have us do with this person? And the king saw something in the person that the person didn't know was in there. So the king said, I'm going to bestow grace because I see what they could be. Oh, come on, somebody. I see them as they were designed and purposed to be. So I'm going to bestow grace so they can begin to get an activation of the blueprint that they were designed to be. So what he did then was we, it says in Ephesians chapter two, that we were dead in trespasses and sins, but you hath he quickened who were dead in that trespass and sins so that now we are made partakers. Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh, come on somebody Amen. of his divine nature. This is all constitution. This is all governmental law because God had to do it legally. Amen. 
Now when I'm excited. Maybe it's because you're sitting next to me. I don't know. I'm sure that's part of it. But I'm excited to know that he made a way so now I didn't have to serve a law or be under a law that's outside of me. But now he quickened the law in me. Woo! Now let's look at this. We've gone from number point, point one. We've gone from being transgressors of the law by the flesh. The flesh was the entity in the way. To authority of the law in us by the spirit. Wow. Operating by grace. Yes. By the king's grace. Hebrews 10:16. For this is the covenant I will make with them. Mm. Everybody say covenant. covenant. I will put my laws into oh, their amen. hearts amen. and where else? Yes. Their amen. minds will I write them. Yes. Now he has quickened us. So we're no longer under the law. Mm -hmm. But the law is in us. Yes. Ah. Mm -hmm. I'm no longer threatened by the law. I'm empowered by it. The word of God is the law. So there are some in controversial circles, maybe, I don't know, I don't keep up with them, but there used to be, that said grace replaced the law. And that's called greasy grace. Because you can't have grace without the law. All right, so we went from law or regulation or really a sentence that was placed on us. A verdict that we were under. Revealing our sin. We hated the law. Because the law revealed to us how bad off we were. But the law of the Lord is perfect. Converting what? The soul. So we didn't understand that. And so we were hopelessly lost until his grace brought us into the law activated in us. So we went from law that was regulation and a verdict under it, revealing sin to a law of principle, precept, authority in us, revealing our original blueprint. So Romans 3.31 do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yea, we what? Establish the law. I love it. I establish it. Romans 6, 14 and 15. For sin shall not have dominion where? Over you. For you're not under the law. See, the position is what matters. I'm no longer under it. But I'm in it. It's in me. I'm no longer under the law, but under grace that brought the law in. What then shall we sin? Because we're not under the law, but under grace. God forbid. Because grace, I put this in parentheses. Grace authorizes the ability to be from the inside out. I'm authorized by grace. Not by works of righteousness that I did. I can't work myself up. Religion says you can try to work yourself in. This is why Jesus had problems with the Pharisees. Because they were definitely outside in people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so lawlessness. Oh, I want you to get this. Really, I hope. Not just for a test. Because we do give a test. By the way. <laughs> but. Not just for a test, but this is so important. Lawlessness is not just breaking a law, but it's any law set by man outside of God's laws. And that should be a capital G, by the way. Can I say it again? Lawlessness is not just breaking a law. So right now, there may be somebody robbing a bank, and that's a degree of lawlessness. But there's greater lawlessness going on in some places in Congress right now. 
Because it's any law set by man outside of God's laws. This is the flesh. This is carnality. This is enmity. Trying to separate us from God. So Romans 8, 7 says, because the carnal mind is what? Enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can it be. So now let's go to another law. It's called the law of liberty. It becomes the process of quickening protection in a new creation. James 1.25. That doesn't even sound like me. Has my voice got higher? Yes. My honey's going to say something. I sense no, it. No, I was going to say that yeah, yeah, the James uh, oh, 125. No, I'm so sorry. No, the other one that we just read. Oh, because the carnal mind yes. is enmity against God. Yes. And I think that we have to be careful not to fight the carnal mind. Because many times we get into, we get into the carnality of the 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 conflict mm. and it's it's not good it's a waste of time because the natural man does not receive the spiritual things of god yeah so what we need to do is pray yeah. and agree together so we, you're saying we don't pray. have to war against the mind anymore well against i guess the the, the cardinality of what you could you mention what we have seen and the lawlessness and all that's going on mm -hmm. but we're not going to change that okay uh, except for the, from the inside out. Yeah. And it's, it's, a, it's a work of the Holy Spirit. Okay. So, okay. so the, the, the carnal mind, we, you know, we keep criticizing these people. But he told us already exactly. that the carnal mind is an enmity with God. And right. everybody is in a carnal mind if they are not in the But we do need to sense. renew our mind every day. Amen. Or we and become. We have to fend off the fiery darts, right? but not by warring against it but by resolving it. So that's, that's awesome. Okay, so where did I leave off? Help me out, somebody. The law of liberty, too. I'm sorry. We, we looked into the perfect law of liberty, living principles. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yes. The liberty. living law, the perfect law of liberty, and continues therein. He being not what? A forgetful hearer, but a doer or an activator of the working. This man shall be blessed in his deed. Oh, praise God. Yes. Whoso looks into the perfect law of liberty. Mm. Jesus said in Matthew 5, 17, I have not come to destroy the law, but what? To fulfill it. So some, some in the grace movement would say, see there? He fulfilled it, so we don't need it anymore. No, he meant he established it. Yes. Yes. Romans 10, 4. For Christ is the end. Now, when it says end there, it means fulfillment. Christ is the fulfillment of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. He activated what was always there. But we couldn't see it because it wasn't in us yet. Wow. Yeah. Right. All right. This is why it says in Ephesians 2, 1. And you hath he quickened. Who were dead where? Trespasses <laughs> in trespasses and sins. Mm -hmm. Now, somebody else has a comment. I don't want to cut you off. I'm kind of going like a freight train. I'm sorry. I think, I think we have to remember that constantly. Because we were, we were not quickened. Mm -hmm. We were dead in trespasses and sins. And we didn't really know it. Yeah. You know, for a while. Yeah. And then when we got enlightened by the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. we began coming into all the promises that we know. Amen. But we Amen. have to remember how it feels not to know. Yeah, that's right. You know, looking at other people. So now look at this. Yeah. James 125. But whoso looketh... Well, I think I just said that. Yes. Into the well, my computer building. messed up again. I don't know what's wrong with my computer. Why? It can't be me. Yeah. Yeah, I was. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. But didn't we already? Yeah, I think it was A. Okay. 
I just got excited and duplicated it, I guess. Oh, you did. <laughs> so now we're talking about a law of liberty. We could have had more note space. <laughs> <laughs> and and going, back, going back to the mind, uh, we do have to renew the mind. We have to realize that's where the enemy yeah. tries to bring the fiery darts. Uh, we, we have to constantly uh, cause the mind to catch up to where we are in our spirit. So we're just saying that we're not trying to focus on warring. Amen. There was a warfare mentality in the mm. church a few years ago where we were constantly trying to fight a war. But God has already won the victory. Amen. Amen. So we just need the mind to catch up yes. and Isn't renew that it. The work from the inside out? Yeah, from the inside yes, out. That's right. Is. Yes, so now let's go to number three, because I got a feeling we're going to have a great round table. The word of the king is law. And there is no grace without that law living in us. Grace opens the authority of the king's word to be empowered in us. I want to say that again. Grace opens the authority of the king's word to be empowered in us. So that's why by grace are you saved through faith. Mm -hmm. Titus 2.15. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Yeah. Let no man despise thee. Mm -hmm. Authority must have what? Jurisdiction, Jurisdiction or territory. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Mm -hmm. This is why the devil fought so hard to keep God from living in you. Mm -hmm. Because you are God's real estate. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. How many of you know we're God's territory as much as the earth? Yes. And so now we've just been empowered uh, to take dominion so that we can have the jurisdiction. But we lost that jurisdiction mm -hmm. through Adam. But well, we got it back yes. through Jesus. Through Jesus. Yes. And now by the power of the Holy Spirit, the very life of God, we are living constitutions. Yes. <laughs> yes. And now, according to that, authority has to have jurisdiction. A kingdom can't be a kingdom without territory. That's right. yeah. territory. So now we have become God's legal territory yes, back in the earth again to go and colonize yes, the world God. and begin to raise up uh, kingdom citizens Amen. to go and take territory Woo. and never give it back. Oh, hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. Yeah, Jesus, when he died, the whole earth is his king of the whole earth. So we have jurisdiction. Don't, don't you love that song? Go and take it. Don't you love that song? Yeah. The whole earth is full of his glory. Yeah. The whole earth is full of his glory. The whole earth is full of his glory. I forget the rest of the song. Glory. What is it? Holy is the Lord. But see, this is what the enemy doesn't want us to see. Is the earth being full of the knowledge of the glory of the Lord is taking the territory back. Jesus came to seek and save that which was lost. What was lost was the earth and the fullness. And if and we have jurisdiction, yes. then we can throw out anything that doesn't that is not godly. Yes, amen. Spiritually speaking, amen. we can't go and throw people out. Physically. Amen. <laughs> because now, then we're carnal. I want, I want Apostle to be prepared. I'm going to ask you to come and sit here and, and throw some stuff in before we we'll get, get offline, chair. okay? So he probably says, that's why I was even thinking about not coming. <laughs> but here I am. Amen. Amen. Because we, we do that to each other. All right. So Titus. Everybody say Titus. Titus. Well, I already said Titus. <laughs> I'm too excited tonight. Okay. So Romans 5.21 says grace reigns through, through righteousness. righteousness what is righteousness it's the law it's justification it's the living breathing word grace reigns i love the word reigns reigns through righteousness how many of you are the righteousness of god in christ Amen. 
Yes. So guess what? Grace is reigning. Yes, amen. The kingdom is reigning. Thank we have been justified by faith in God's word, his constitution. So we don't see grace. We don't have to. Grace sought us. Huh. Yes. But we seek first the kingdom mm -hmm. and his what? Right. Righteousness. Right. Why? Because that's my original blueprint. That's my original design. I want to seek first the kingdom government that governs me now by a living word. Mm -hmm. Amen. And then all the other things I need will be added Amen. unto me. Matthew 6, 33. Apostle, would you come and find a chair and, and come up and join me on camera? Uh, everybody welcome Apostle Chris. Yay. Amen. And uh, just come and just share a little bit of what you may have concerning this subject tonight. And he spoke on Tuesday, a recording you've got us here. Amen. Amen. Well, hello, everyone. Amen. Hi, guys. Hi. Uh, I guess the only thing I'll probably make... Uh, point on is James 125 mm. um, but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty that word perfect means accomplished or finished mm. yeah. and you don't see that word utilized as it relates to the law especially in the old covenant because the law of liberty attained to a completely different thing yeah. it actually the reason it's finished or the reason it's perfect or accomplished is because it produced what the law under the old testament could not do that that only produced an annual atonement mm -hmm. but this produced something that is once and for all yes yes and so the reason is perfect is because liberty was attained yeah yeah freedom was attained yeah and that being attained reveals to us that this law of liberty is perfected in that christ came and he redeemed us yeah you said he did not atone it's important to understand that he did not, his blood didn't cover our sins. It That's removed right. Him. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Uh, I think that should even influence our salvation message because yeah. mm. people who are enslaved in their, in their life without God, they're only enslaved by the lack of appropriation mm. of what's already been given to them. Yeah. And so freedom has already been given. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, all you got to do is just receive it yeah Amen. and you appropriate that by faith yeah because the perfect law of liberty yeah has been enacted it has yeah. been enforced so the liberty that we have now is in accordance with all that god had predetermined to do and i i don't think that there's any plan b for god i think it's no, all just right. the original plan Amen. but i think that's the that's the the something that stuck out to me and then the other thing i guess i'll add a second one in yeah there yeah real quick uh is you know, the law, there are so many, and I've, I've been, I was raised up in circles where the law was actually, in some ways it was dismissed mm -hmm. and it was, the alternative was grace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's it. But there's a relationship between the two. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And the relationship between the two is what makes them both beautiful. Yeah. And I think it's important to understand that Jesus said, it is important that I go away because I'm going to send the comfort of the Greek word is parakletos. Mm -hmm. Parakletos actually is like one who comes alongside us yes, yes. or one who pleads the case for another. Yeah, yeah. We understand that to be a lawyer. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you go in court, you are unaware of the law. You have no idea what the law is. Yeah. All you know is you may know what it says, but you don't know how to interpret the law. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. And so what you do is you hire a lawyer. Yeah. Who's so well versed in the He's law. He's also called an advocate, right? Yeah. yeah. An yeah. advocate yeah. or a counselor. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. You hire someone that knows the law inside and out yeah, yeah so that they can actually plead your case in accordance with that law. yeah so jesus said i'm going to send you the paracletos yeah. the lawyer yeah and the law that lives in you that i'm going to put in your heart is going to actually teach you that yeah. law in such a way that when moments when you don't understand the Holy Spirit is wow. going to come and yeah. he's actually even going to plead your case yeah. for likewise in our infirmities. For when we know not yet how to pray, he yeah. prays Amen. for us Amen. with groanings that, can, that cannot be uttered. So he's actually pleading our case. Yes, he's, praying, yes. he's not praying just through us. He's praying for us. Amen. So can you, can you answer one thing too, uh, while you're here? <laughs> um, she brought up about not warring with the mind, but yet 
the mind is is something we still have to deal with, even with the law of liberty. Mm -hmm. What would you say about that? How can people win the victory over the mind? How can they win the victory? Or, or what would you say about that whole area that we're not just warring all the time? Well, I think one of the most simplest things to do is, is just readily receive the word mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and, and appropriate faith with it. You know, you have to you have to apply faith. This is the problem that the people of Israel had. They never came into rest because mm -hmm. they never That's mixed the word they heard with faith. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. And so the word needs to be we need to add faith to it. Yeah. Uh, we have Pastor Rob, who's in our church. We were having a, a class one day and he brought something to the surface. And we became very aware in that moment that. Just the simplicity of just saying, you know what, I just, I, I just believe that. Yeah. I, you know, I just take it to heart. And I think that's the key. But the, the most important thing is you have to allow the word of God to conform mm. your thinking. Yes. Not try to get the word of God to agree with yes. things you already <laughs> that's think. That's good. Yeah. Which, yeah. Wow. which is a type of lawlessness. Mm. Yeah. Yes, lawlessness. We can be lawless within our own lives. Wow. Absolutely. Agree with our own opinion. Yeah. I mean, it comes down to renovating the mind. You have yeah. to, you have to renew. We just did a thing on this, you know, about renovating the mind. Demolition. And the demolition has Amen. to happen. You got to get out the old. Yeah. Before yeah. you start putting in the new. So many people just start adding gospel on top of all the lies they believe before they got saved. That's right. And that's where the problem comes. That's where the problem comes. And I think that's where the lawlessness comes mm -hmm. from. Because we have Babylonian theology. Wow. We're trying to, it's mixed, see? We, we, have, we have gospel and then we have our old way of thinking. Yeah, yeah. And so what happens is, is we try to mix the two together. And this is where we get statements like, I'm a sinner saved by grace. Right. That's not true. No. I was a sinner yeah. that was saved by grace yeah. that has now become the righteousness Amen. of God in Christ. Amen. I can't Amen. be two things at once. Amen. My identity is not split, but this is why I believe oh the church is schizophrenic. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> because the church is experiencing schizophrenia because we're preaching out of both sides of yeah, our mouth. Yeah. Oh, wow. And the preachers are preaching out of both sides of yeah. our mouth and the yeah. people are trying to live in two different identities. Oh, yeah. And we can't do that. We gotta we gotta accept that we we are not sinners and the righteousness of God at the yeah, same time. Yeah. We're a new creature in Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Old yeah. things have passed away. My old man is dead. Okay. Yeah. What I'm living out of now is Christ living Amen. in me. Amen. Amen. So there you have it. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. 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 Awesome. Amen. And you know, I think wow. I think we could say with that too, that whenever a stronghold is formed, mm. it's because there's not been resolved in the fact that we've already won the victory. We live from from the inside out as far as our mind not from the outside in. So uh, one day God showed me a stronghold and he said, do you know what that is? And I said, wow, it looks formidable. And he said, no, get closer, run to it. Don't run from it. And I went closer and I saw that what it was was an empty fort because it was a dead work. It's an old recording. It's something that's not even operating anymore. Come on, somebody. Amen. So what we got to do is realize that we don't have to constantly war with the mind. We just have to resolve it in our mind yes. to, to renew it daily. Amen. Amen. Okay, well, that's Facebook. You, that's what you get. Because uh, now we're going to talk a lot around the table and have some coffee, I hope. <laughs> oh, here it comes. Yay. Here it comes. Oh, look, 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 I, I my wonder, love, my honey loves me. Well, is it sweet enough? It'll be sweet, it'll be popular. Like too much sugar. Mm. All right, well, we love you all. I'm going to go back and read all your comments. Please, even when it's posted and recorded, uh, share this, comment, view, and get in on this and let people know about it. This was good stuff tonight. Yes. Agree? Yes. Amen. Thank you, Apostle. Thank you, all of yes. you. Amen. Until next time, what do we say to the king?